we're ready to get started on 13.1. And 13.1, we're gonna look at a class called a deck, which is gonna start out using an array to hold a lot of cards. And later on, we're gonna use a more flexible storage container. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do, this is the chapter 12, which I made into last series of videos for chapter 12 in the book. And I showed you my modifications to it. Most of them occur at the near the bottom. So I'm gonna make a new project. This is gonna be chapter 13. Okay, finish. So it's gonna give me a public static void main and, and a class called chapter 13. I wanna bring card into here, but if you just drag it, uh, I believe it makes a link to it. I, I want my own, just in case I edit card, uh, and if you're following along, you may want inside of each project to have your actual source code inside instead of links to a uh, source code outside. So I'm gonna right click. I have that package highlighted. Right click, new Java class. I'm gonna call this card and I'm just gonna copy everything from inside the card here. So highlight all. Now I'm done with this card, so I'm gonna close it. And again, this is the one here right in the middle. Now the new card that just got made, delete it all, paste. It should come in. The only error you should have is the package should be chapter 13. And then you should be good to go in terms of your card class working. Oh, make sure you save. All right, so now I have card in here. Now. I need to make the class deck. They make it in the same way. So again, right click package, new Java class, deck. Okay, and always put your name here. All right, deck. So ready to roll with deck. They give us some code here. So let's paste this in and then we'll go over what it actually does. All right, I do strongly encourage you to read the book, uh, but I'm gonna tell you in my own words what this code is doing. So right here, this is private, meaning you can't access it outside of the class. It's not static, which means it belongs to an instance of a deck or a deck object and it's gonna be an array of card objects. So it's a card array called cards. Uh, I think I called this hand in the lab, but if you're uh, not watching lab videos, don't worry. So anyways, it's just called cards. So here, what is this? Public deck. So it's a method, but it's a very special method. It has no return type. It doesn't have, for example, you could have if I had a void in front of it, it's a method that returns nothing, but this is a very special method. This is called a constructor. If I could spell constructor. All right, this constructor takes an integer n and it makes a new deck of cards. But notice it makes a new deck of cards or a new array of cards, but it doesn't fill in the slots of the array with cards. Uh, so it'll create an array, but the array is gonna be filled with null until we go and add in individual cards. And then get cards, all that does is returns this variable up here, and you can click on the variable and it will, uh, I should call it a field, because it belongs to the object and it highlights every occurrence of that variable in this file, that field in this file. So we're gonna add another constructor. How do I know this is a constructor? Ah, oh, it says it right here, yes. But it's public name of the class. That's how you know it's a constructor. Just like this one was a constructor, public name of the class. So let's go ahead, paste this one in. And I'm to tab all this over once with tab. Okay, so this makes a 52 card array. 
But again, doesn't we don't make the new cards on this line. This is just the storage container to put 52 cards in in the future. It's going to be filled with 52 nulls right now. We got an index. Uh, this we've seen this code before. The only difference is we're filling up the card array that was declared up here with new cards. And we start at suit zero, uh, go up to suit three, and we could do all the ranks from one to 13. And so this should fill up the cards with all 52 cards in order uh, by suit. Uh, so all the, was first? Clubs will go first. Anyways, we're gonna print this out, so we'll see it work. All right, so now we need to test this out. So where do we put this code? So this code right here is gonna go into our public static void main. Now let's close a few of these. I don't need this chapter 12 open. So here's our public static void main. When I hit run, this is the method that actually goes, the method that actually runs. So let's go ahead, we'll build a new deck. Now if I run this right here, I'm expecting no output. I built a new deck, but there's nothing to print out. So, here is a method. It's a void method called print. Now, where does this go? Well, just look at the code that we're using here, this.cards, where does our variable cards live? You might think, ah, oh, it lives over here, but you can search through this whole thing. There's nothing in here called cards with an S. Uh, the deck, however, that's where this cards variable lives. It's an array of cards. So this file is where the uh, print needs to go. So here we go for card in this.cards. You always read the colon as the word in. We're gonna print out card. Now this is gonna print one card on each line, which is gonna take a lot of space. I'm gonna switch this up in a minute, uh, but let's go ahead and call this. So it's gonna be, it's a public method, it's not static, so it's a public method called print. So in order to call it, I have to have an object of type deck. Good news is ours is called deck with lowercase. So deck dot, and then if this would hurry up, print should be on this list here. Oh, come on now. All right, I'm just gonna type print. And I think it took no arguments, yep. And now it should print out that deck and it should be in the order it was constructed. And you can see my, my modified print statement, uh, ace of clubs, two of clubs, three of clubs, four of clubs, da 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 da, king of clubs. Then it goes to ace of diamonds, two of diamonds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, I don't want it to print on a new line each time. Uh, I do, I'm gonna have it print all on one line. Here we go, there we go. So it prints all on one line. Uh, it still won't make it on the screen, but I think that's a little bit better. Uh, let me sout a new line at the very end. All right, string. So I'm gonna, Eventually, I think I'm gonna need a two string and it's probably coming up somewhere in this, uh, in the notes later, in the book later. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna print out results. Okay, so it should print out one line and then give me a new line at the end. Okay, that's a little bit too many cards for one line and in NetBeans, you can wrap text, control R. Do make sure if you hit control R, where your mouse is is very important. If you hit control R and you're up in the edit window, that's gonna rename or refactor rename. If you do it down here in the output window, it's going to uh, wrap, which I was trying to figure out why wrap is not control W. That doesn't, well, that's a close a window. 
Anyways, control R is a wrap. Probably a letter wrap should start with. Okay, so you see everything here. It's all in order. It does annoyingly break lines unintelligently, meaning it just cut the uh, ace of hearts kind of in half right here. But anyways, good enough. It works.